Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we are exploring the question, what are our greatest physical feats? And I don't mean like which of our feet are bigger because my <laughs> left foot is a little bit bigger than my right foot. In fact, a half size bigger than my right foot. That seems like it could be a problem. Yeah, so my greatest physical foot is my left foot. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, a size. Tw it's like a size twelve point two, and my really? right foot is like a size eleven point seven. Eight, seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just hmm. get twelves and call it even. Call it a day. Now, actually, one of my feet is bigger than the other foot too, because back when we, along with the help of all of the mythical beasts at the time, we designed a shoe that we then sold. I don't know if you knew this. Called the mythical shoe, and when you start to make your own shoe, it was basically like a. It was a fabulous Converse ripoff shoe. I mean, Whoa. it was. It had wing, it had a wing embroidered on the side. Because it was canvas and had a. We threw a lot of that shoe. It, it had a guitar pick holster. Yeah. <laughs> and it a and mythical it, shoe. I still love the idea. That was like a nice, tasteful black and white. But then there was also like, a, oh my gosh, look away, blue and green. No, that was, that was the fun pair. Then we made all. Anyway, I digress. But when you find yourself. Just a heads up, whenever you find yourself making your own branded shoe, as 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 you will, um, you'll find that you have the luxury of getting them to fit exactly how you want. And I found out that one of my feet is bigger than the other one too. Do you know which one? Because I'm like, oh, I, want a, I wanted a 10 and a half in one foot and an 11 in the other one. But which one, is it your left foot I bigger? can't remember. I can't remember because hmm. once I ran out of those shoes, I'm like, I gotta forget that happened. Well, I don't have that luxury. Mine anymore. is noticeable, like with any pair of shoes that I try on. That's why I always just try on the left shoe at shoe stores. And then wear a, two socks on the right. Foot. No, it's not that big of a difference. It's just like if the left foot fits, I know the right foot's going to fit. Also, my left arm is longer than my right arm, uh, probably by like a quarter to a third of an inch. So much so that like when I get measured for like a fitted shirt, they have to measure it differently. Really. Um, my left, one of my eyes is a little bit bigger than the other. Which one is it? The left one. The left one, yeah. The, my whole left side of the body. I think that the eye opening is bigger. The eyeball is probably the, the same. The eyeball is the same size. Uh, yeah, I think there's other things that, but the, interestingly. You all, always look like you're about to wink. All the injuries. It's not that bad. <laughs> all the injuries are on the right side of my body. My elbow my wrist, my shoulder, my hip, and my knee, all right side. The weak side, man, but I'm right-handed. Isn't this weird? I don't know if it's weird. So we are gonna talk about our greatest physical feats. Oh, and did you happen to notice? What? What, a little, a little, what? A this little jingle not, around my neck? This is not how Olympic medalists, if that's what, you're, what you are. What is this? You gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta learn to, to wear the wear the prizes in style. And we continue to try to teach you to this, to win with some sort of decorum. To you, win like I expected it? Yes. Well, I, this Act is Act like you've been there before, as Josh Young told you after you scored a goal one time. Two goals in one game? Yeah. Um, I don't know, if you're not watching the video version of this, I'd be happy to fill you in on the fact that I am sporting around my thick muscular neck the weight is 15 and a half inch neck. <laughs> <laughs> the weight of a hefty physical feat completed. And that is I ran in a Spartan race and I got a medal. I got a medal. I'm wearing it. This is never I got a I got a I got a Science Olympiad medal once. I will I will note that you just turned it around and it just said finisher on it. So, I mean it, yeah, which is I, mean, I didn't get a place. But hey, you know what? You finished. I, fin I, I didn't even do it. <laughs> I finished. You didn't even start. I didn't even start. Then on the back, there's a third of another medal that if I complete apparently two more Spartan races in this calendar year, I get a big daddy tr Ooh, trifecta wow. medal. That's smart marketing, man. You, yeah. Especially yep. a collector. You definitely want to get the other two pieces of that. Right. I don't even know how, but I'm probably already signing up. Um, so Link's gonna tell us about his his experience with the Spartan race, and then we're gonna talk about some other physical feats. Uh, but I do, and I will say that I discovered just a little more of a tease. Something happened that I did not anticipate. That I think is gonna have a forever impact on who I am. Okay. 
I, I, I'm my interest is peaked. With is a, it peaked with a Q? Okay. Um, I am going to answer some questions that have been lingering out there. Those of you who uh, follow my very dynamic Instagram account, uh, Red MC, also the same name of my very dynamic and awesome Twitter account, Red MC. Shout out to both of those accounts. I encourage you to follow both of them for enrichment. Um, right, and if you want to complete the set, this is shout out to Link Lamont <laughs> on Instagram. That's He's right. Very active. Yeah, yeah. Very active. Very very active now. Um, like a, like a, like when the Amish go and sow their wild oats. That active. Whoa. You know how they have a year they can do that. Better protect yourself. I don't know what they call it, but but it's where they can sow their wild oats. I think that's what they call it. I think they call it the Devil's Year. I'm that active um, on Instagram now. I posted this video to both accounts. I thought it deserved that kind of exposure. Yes, I I need, and I haven't gotten the complete download. Oh. I, I again, I've you heard, can't download. I've heard Insta pieces in Instagram videos. You're I've talking, tried. You're talking about the cat. Yeah. Yes. You may have seen that I posted uh, a video about a minute long video of a night vision camera focused on the couch in my living room, which is actually a cropped version of the of the bigger video. Oh, nice, you did some cropping. I wanted to draw your eye to the cat, and I said something like, see this cat on my couch at 3 a.m.? Here's the thing, we don't have a cat. Dun, dun, dun. And I left it at that, and apparently that was incredibly strategic, because it was like my most liked post ever. How many, how many likes? Um, I think at the time that we're recording this, I think it's it it's been seen like almost three hundred thousand times oh, on crap. either Twitter or Instagram or both. I don't know, which mm. is a lot for a video on those platforms for I me. Th I think I need to know an exact number if I'm going to compare it to my return to inst Instagram. Okay, how many likes does that have, Alex? Two hundred eighty-seven thousand. Two hundred eighty-seven thousand. Oh, God, you! I think you blew me out of the water. <laughs> Okay, but that's views. That's views. Though. Oh, that's views. No, no, no. Likes. Sixty-three thousand two hundred ninety-six likes. Okay. Oh. Ha. Okay. Yeah, because people don't usually like videos as much as yeah. they just watch them. Okay. Yeah. That's de that's a decent number. It's not what I got when I, when I, you know, when I came back. To well, I Instagram. think that the real comparison should be your watermelon outfit picture to my watermelon outfit picture. So let's. Oh yeah. <laughs> let's, now let's, something tells me. Let's bring those. Something up. tells me you've done this <laughs> because I can see the glimmer in your eye. No, no, I just. Of course, I haven't done it. Um, I haven't done it. Rhett, you have 117,085. Okay. 117,000 likes on Rhett's watermelon. I mean, you're close, like you have 107. Okay, and by the time that this is Oh, it'll it, it, you will have surpassed me. Oh yeah, by I'll the time that blow this it is out. Uh, on the air airwaves. Yeah, mine's still on the upward trend. Okay, but anyway, that's all you wrote on your Instagram caption. But there was more to the story, as Paul Harvey is that his name used to say. Everybody loves Paul Harvey. The rest of the story. Well, yeah, he said the rest of the story. Not there's more to the story. <laughs> um, the real story is not as exciting as Satan manifested himself as a cat in my living room because that's what I wanted you to think. Okay. That did not happen as far as I know. What happened was, because I also don't make a habit of just like watching my, you know, looking at my couch all night long through the <laughs> through video, <laughs> through the, going back to the archives. Yeah, how would you even find I it? woke up, I walked downstairs as I do when I wake up. Oh, was this the middle of the night or the morning? This was the morning. Okay. And the front door, was just wide open. And I knew that I was the first person downstairs. I knew I, I knew I was the only person awake. And so I was like, okay, that means that this door has been open all night. I mean, like open and like, come on in, like friends. A, a gate. Yeah. And so I did what we do in my house when you encounter a problem. I immediately tried to figure out who to blame. <laughs> And so I knew that Locke had had friends over the night before and so I yelled upstairs, Locke, did your friends leave the door open? I think your friends left the door open last night. It was open all night. And he yelled back, no, dad. <laughs> uh, that's, Healthy communication That's how we climate. communicate in the uh, McLaughlin household. For, are you, was he, was that point blank range and you just yell like that or? Yeah, he was right next to okay. me. Okay. <laughs> he was upstairs. And then I said, well, I'm gonna check the video camera footage. You didn't believe him. So I uh, went into the archives 
on, that I can access via my phone. And I um, started to, because basically if you zoom out that, that, that image of the, the couch to the far left is the front door. It's sort of the, the, it's the living room and the front door cam that gets it all. Okay, yeah. And I kind of scrubbing through, but I'm kind of scrubbing through ham handedly so that I accidentally like scrubbed all the way to 3 a.m. Whoops. And then like I see this little dot. Well, did, did you see that the door had been left open or something? Well, yeah, okay, so skipping forward and then I'll come back. I did see that it was his friends who left and did not close the door. <laughs> so it was, it was his. Did but, you yell at him then? Yeah. Or you were distracted by? I was focused on the cat at this point. Okay, go ahead. But uh, they they walked out and they pulled the door too but it didn't close all the way and then it was like a windy night so it just blew the door open. Okay. But what I saw was that little black dot and then it took a lot I had to like, it takes a lot to get back to this a specific little minute, you know? Right. But then I'm like. Cause this is like an eight hour video. That's a freaking cat. <laughs> a cat came in that, and first I thought, is that a raccoon? And some people still think that they see a raccoon and that it's very hard to tell. And there is a family of raccoons that lives in the lot next to me. Um, Like literally a family, one time I saw the mom, she was walking a- across the fence next to the pool and three baby raccoons were following her. That's cute. Uh. And also, if you listen to the to the video, you'll see that at the end, after the cat disappears, sort of behind the wall, there's like a a, a repeated sound of like somebody taking like a, a cord and like hitting against the floor, which that's a very raccoon thing to do. Yeah. It's not a cats don't make that cats don't leave a mark. You know, they're like evil spirits. They just float through spaces. I don't step heavy and stuff like that. So in the video that but you I do posted, think it was a cat. the cat jumps off the couch behind the couch? No, no, it comes to the edge of the couch which is behind behind the wall, uh, kind of the corner of the room where there's like that light and then like that the little The camera shelf. view was obstructed. And oh. he did something, I don't know what it was, but I'm 90% sure it was a cat and 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 it's a black cat that I think is a neighbor's cat that is kind of around, and we don't feed cats. I don't believe in feeding cats as a policy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I believe that some cats should be fed. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm just saying that I don't feed cats. You don't believe in you feeding <laughs> cats. And um, it's a neighbor's cat that's one of those roving cats. Yeah, if you feed it, it'll keep coming back. And so apparently he just thought it was okay to come inside. Apparently he didn't understand the disposition of our household towards cats. Because you didn't, did you see the cat exit? Or if not, did you think the cat may still be in the house? Uh, no, I thought he had probably gone. I thought he had left. Because At that point you were thinking about an Instagram post. Oh yeah. You were you had moved on from Locke being wrong and you being right and from a cat being there to how do I exploit this digitally? Yeah, yeah, and when that was when my wife and I had the conversation about um, because I think she was, she was like, "Oh, I should tweet that or something." Oh. I'm like, whoa, "Whoa, whoa, I should tweet that." <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, it, we so you guys are trying to out tweet each other because I'm I'm like I'm like, well, you know, I just I I think that my post has the most potential. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can, did but you, she did. Did you give her the line? You can retweet my tweet. You no, know, she did. She did. Uh, she did come up with some of the verbiage. That she, I think she came up with. Here's the thing: we don't have a cat. It was, oh. a, it was a collective tweet. She's your ghostwriter. Yeah, she's my ghostwriter. And uh, so it's also like just the other other day. It's funny because now that she's on Twitter, uh, I mean she she's she's got an Instagram account that's you know, private. Well, she's got one that's like a her like design thing that's public, and then she's got one that's herself that's private. But Twitter, of course, is just public for everybody. So like she's she's, she's kind of getting into the fray a little bit on okay. Twitter, and. Um, so now when things happen at home, there's a little bit of a race. Like, so my most liked tweet ever as of this weekend was my, I was like, uh, Jesse asked Shepard, she said, what kind of eggs do you want? And he said, pancakes. <laughs> it's got like 20 something thousand likes. <laughs> Cause I just tweeted my wife to my 10 year old, what kind of eggs do you want, 10 year old? Pancakes. People just love that. You had no role in that except tweeting it. Yeah, right. And so, and as soon as it happened, I was like, "That's a good tweet." And it's funny because, uh, you know, Jesse was actually 
in she she was part of the tweet, mm. but she didn't. We recognized it was funny at the time, but she didn't immediately think I got to tweet that. Oh, and then, and and so she lost. Yeah, but she could. She commented on it. It's an interesting thing because uh, when what was the comment? Like, hey, this should have been my tweet. No, she says she made a uh, she made a joke about eggs or pancakes. I can't okay. remember exactly. She glommed. I on. liked it. She glommed on, and you yeah. liked it. Out yeah. of a, it, it's funny because um, I don't. I don't tweet that much, you know. We we've talked about this. Yep. I'm yep. off of that now. Right. I'm on to the new thing. The new thing called Instagram. <laughs> but um Britain, who now lives with us, he started tweeting things that are set around my house. Oh, so, so he's if, doing that. So he's he's doing what you're doing. He's like listening in to stuff in the Neil household and then tweeting like stuff that Christie's saying. Well, he's that, tweeting There's it. a treasure trove there. Yeah, but I of course I can't do that. <laughs> you know, I can't be the one that's like Here's something my wife said, implying <laughs> that, like on. you'll I, find this hilarious. I follow uh, Britton on Twitter, but I I haven't followed him closely enough to know to see these tweets that you speak of. I don't follow him either. No, I do, but I do follow him. But I'm just saying I don't. No. I just look at moments and mentions on right, Twitter, right, so right. I don't see a lot of what. Because my, he my, told that, me that's he another it. thing. My wife says she's like I, I walk home. She I, I walk home. I walk in <laughs> in home, <laughs> and she says he didn't like my tweet. Oh. I'm like, well, I didn't see your freaking tweet. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll go like it now. Dang. Yeah, yeah. It's only if she thinks that her tweet was deserving of a like, and it often is. But I haven't seen these Britain tweets. <laughs> so how many times has he done this? And does he say my? How does he? How does he? He has this catchphrase. It? He's tried out this catchphrase. It's like he'll he'll say he'll give the exchange, and then he'll say something like. Another day in the Neil household or something. Hashtag another day in the Neil yeah, household. Something like that. Yeah. Gotta shorten that. He's, you know, I'm, I'm letting him do his own experimentation. Well, Even though I am an expert in Twitter, <laughs> right? you know, who am I? Right. Who am I to give him advice on the on the tweeting? Okay, so that's the story. It's not as exciting as you might, th I mean, it's still a little bit exciting, but it was just as simple as leaving the door open. It, you know, fun fact, if you leave your door open, animals and or people, I mean, I should be happy that it was just a cat. Yeah, had a cat burglar, <laughs> and that the cat left. I mean, you could be taking care of a cat right now. Well, I wouldn't be. I would have escorted it out. Okay. Uh, All right, we're going to get into um, my race and what happened and how my life was potentially changed or not. But first, we want to just encourage you to buy some stuff from us. I mean, <laughs> let's be real. We're selling stuff. You can rep it. Uh, mythical dot store. Why don't you grab that hat there? Link? Has hats. Because I've got a hat in my hand. We're not going to wear them because I mean, who would do that? Well, Link's wearing his. Uh, I have a tan hat. Works great over uh, a set of cans. Put it over your cans. Um, That's a euphemism for headphones. Uh, this is the way. This is the way the kids are wearing the hats now. It's just lightly, lightly placed on <laughs> on top Gingerly. of the head. Wow, look how big my head looks when I do that. <laughs> and your head can look this big too. <laughs> Go to mythical.store. Get that and all types of other stuff. Bigger head, bigger brain. Bigger head, bigger brain. Okay, Link, uh, tell us about your experience. Um, spoiler alert, I got a medal. I don't, I don't know if I pointed that out earlier, but I got a, I mean, it is a heavy medal. Like, hold your hand out. There it is. Yeah, it makes you feel like you did something. That's substantial, man. Reminds me of when we made medals for our Super Note competition. The, arguably the largest YouTube collaboration slash competition to date, to well, that date At least that's what, that's what we called it. At least that's what we said. That's how we marketed it. It was a. True or not. It was a competition to see who could hold out the longest continuous vocal note <laughs> on the internet. We should bring that back. Oh gosh, it was a nightmare. It's a different world now. It's a different internet world. Anyway, uh, we made uh, medals like this, but this one's pretty freaking cool. Oh, you want this hat out? Which one? Rhett's fault? So I go to a gym and they're doing things like, a lot of people at my gym, they'll get on Facebook and they'll like talk to each other and encourage each other and there's a, there's a and of course, I don't do that. No, encouragement. I'm, I'm encouragement for losers. I'm I'm there for the burpees. I'm there for the tonage. I'm there. I'm there to. I'm there to just get fit. I mean, the first thing that got me into the gym, uh, three years ago now ish, was I was having shoulder problems. I was having knee problems. I went to physical therapy. They taught me some 
uh, exercises that then made me feel better but I was like, I gotta maintain my body. I, got, I gotta turn a corner here. So I started going to the gym but I'm not one of these people that's like, I'm, I'm just, I'm doing this for me, I'm doing this for my health, I'm doing it for my wife and kids, you know, to, to, to be physically a part of their lives, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think I know what you mean. You said it differently than I would have. <laughs> um, you wanna be around, you wanna be engaged, you wanna be spry. Yeah, I wanna be able to grab them and toss them. You wanna be young at heart and in body. Yeah, man, and not get hurt. Um, arm wrestle, that yeah. kind of thing. Show them who's boss. But the social aspect of it was not really my thing, so I'm not really, I mean I know people, I have friends at the gym, but uh, you know, at the, at the end of last year, I'm thinking there's some things that I'm, I, I just, I'm trying to be more open to even more experience, especially when it relates to self care. And I think those two uh, things coming together led me very early on at the top of the year, as I was leaving the gym, uh, the guy just mentioned, hey, there's a sign up for the Spartan race. And I'd heard of this and some people had done it before and, they, and a lot of people sign up and they do it as a, a group from the gym. And I didn't really think about it, I was like, I'm gonna do that. I looked at the date, I knew we weren't out of town and I just signed up. It was kinda like I was observing myself make a decision that I would never thought I would make. It was like an out of body experience. And I was like, I'm doing this, I don't, I don't know why. I'm just, I'm gonna give it a shot, you know? I'm open now, I'm more interested in, I don't know what this, I don't know what's involved in this race. And then the next time I got to the gym, I was like, maybe you should tell me a little bit about this thing that I'm gonna be doing, this Spartan race. It was like, well, we don't train here. It's like you gotta come Sunday mornings first thing. We're gonna meet out at a park and we're gonna do like special training for it. I'm like, okay. You gotta run a 5K and there's 20 obstacles hmm. all along the way. And th there's, there's a Spartan race, there's a tough mutter, there's all types of things floating around that I've heard about. Um, but I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go to the training. I'll see what how this shapes up. Um, I didn't really look on the website. I made up my mind. I didn't. I didn't want to like look at the obstacles or really try to understand what's happening because I didn't want to. I felt like I would get nervous. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go um, to the to the training on that Sunday morning. We but the obstacles that were gonna be, they weren't gonna replicate the obstacles in this park. Not to not to an exact degree, right? No. When we went to the park, there was just a small group of us, like six of us and the trainer guy, my the, friend who owns the, the gym. Do the obstacles change each year? Um, they change from, from location to location, yeah. So you don't really know what you're getting into, that's part of it. Yeah, but I didn't even wanna know like generally. I knew there was mud involved and they talked about like crawling under barbed wire. I'm like, well, okay. And I get there and it's just a park. There's no obstacles at all. I mean, it's just, there's a dog park over here and then there's a regular park over here and so, we have to pair up and just start running a lap around this park off, there's no, it just on the dirt. And then whenever we would come back around, we'd get down and we'd start crawling on the dirt and like he had some bags and we'd carry some bags or we'd do burpees. But he was talking about now, you gotta get low and this is how you do an army crawl. Just imagine there's a barbed wire over top of him like dang, am I gonna be bleeding at this if, thing? Well if you don't get low enough. I think at like Tough Mudder, they, Jenna was telling me they'll like sh shock you and stuff. There was none of that for the Spartan. The there, Spartan race is not. The Tough Mudder gets up to. Is not as crazy They all have that. different levels, but the, tu the, the most, it, in, the, mo the highest Tough Mudder is like a Tough Mudder. Yeah. So um, this, you don't get shocked, but you do get dirty and you get, da you get down in it. So like I'm learning how to do an army crawl in the middle of this park and that's not easy. You gotta have good hip mobility hmm. um, to stay low. And I'm, I'm crawling around on my belly and all of a sudden I hear somebody say, what are you guys up to? And they say, oh, we're training for a Spartan race. And then I'm like crawling up to this guy and he's like walking his dog, heckling us. And he's like, you pay to crawl around in your belly out here like that? And I'm like, I wanted to say something very nasty to him. I bit my tongue, I didn't say anything. You're just trying to make conversation. And then I'm like, his dog is crappy. You pay for your dog to crap like that? And Th then that I- That would've been a bad comeback. And so here I am crawling, 
I'm crawling and there's like dog crap obstacles. Oh, well, thank you, sir. <laughs> it's like kind of kind of humiliating. I was kind of like second guessing my decision. And then we start running and I realize I am horrible hmm. at running. Like the I know how to move my legs like a runner, but it's something about the breathing part of it that is extremely difficult for me. Like I was out of breath, man. I was struggling. I learned this when we ran the mile yes. in our old studio in a very small circle. And I thought that you were joking. I thought that you the trouble that you were having with it was part of was a bit. I think I have asthma. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to make light of asthma. I, I just can't breathe when I start running. I think it's a uh I, I think it's a rhythm thing. Yeah. I mean I was asking about it like my trainer was like You're not breathing deeply enough. Yeah, you gotta you know, the breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. I remember back when we were like in Little League Baseball, we'd have to like run laps around there and like, it's like breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth and I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, we paired up because, and there, there's a woman who had a French accent, his name was Blondine. Whoa, whoa, I'd whoa, seen what? her around. She sounds like a graphic novel star or something like <laughs> Blondine. Blondine the French woman became my workout partner, so I'm running it. That's we the start. Best, hold on, that's the best name. She's a great person that too. I've ever heard. Great person. Um, I might have a daughter just so I can have a blondine. I'm gonna get my vasectomy reversed. I'm gonna go to one of those specialists that can that can put your sperm in a centrifuge to make sure that yeah. only the female sperm or whatever you call it get in there. I'm gonna have a a girl so I can name her blondine. You Wait, heard it right here. And you need to set it set the spin cycle to French. So she comes out speaking French. Oh gosh, that could uh, probably be done. It's twenty. Is it nineteen? You know what? It's twenty nineteen. I never ask her to speak to me in French. <laughs> well, good. But she has an accent. She's a very nice person. Her and her husband own um, like these gyms for kids. You know how when you like take your kid to this place and there might be trampolines and obstacles and crap. So she oh, was like a jump center. Yeah. So she's like athletic minded, and we start running and. She, I'm like, oh, she's setting the pace. <laughs> it's like, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, mean, gotta keep up with blind. Very mean. early, I'm like, uh, I'm not good at running. I don't think I know how to breathe right. And then a few, a, like, a, like three minutes later, I couldn't talk anymore. So it was like I couldn't object. I just had to like really try to run to keep up with her. She, so she's your partner though. So it's just, it's and just it's, you and her. It's not that she was running fast. It's just that she was running at a decent pace. Right. And I don't know how to do that. Right from a from a breathing point, it could be in your legs too. Maybe your legs aren't moving the right way. You have an un inefficient stroke. They I, call it. I I achieved fatigue pretty quickly, but I pushed through, just like it says on the back of my medal. Push harder. Okay, almost I'm like I'm almost training, like it says on the back <laughs> of your. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when when you get really fatigued, it's hard to run. And um, I found myself falling. We're running on the dirt. And falling I, behind or falling? Like falling on my face. Like falling, like she was running a little bit ahead. It was a little bit of a decline. It was like dirt and gravelish type scenario. And whenever she would hit a little dip and then it would go down and up, she'd, she'd get some momentum. So be like whoop whoop. And so she could get up the other side. I wasn't great at that either. And I fell like, I, if it weren't for my hands catching me, I would have fallen flat on my face. And mm -hmm. like my knees bleeding, and she's like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "I'm just, I'm not good at running." <laughs> <laughs> and I get up, I'm like running the rest, and then, uh, so I had a war wound. So I come back the next week, and I got a, I got a knee brace, a knee brace over my knee wound. Okay, because my knee was also hurting after that, mm -hmm. on the inside and the outside. And then I'm running the next time, and Blondie's not there because she had to go to France. Yeah, for the course. holidays. So yeah, I'm running the, the with Lewis. Qu quarterly trip to France. Lewis is even faster than Blondine. I'm trying to keep up with him. <laughs> Just like sucking air. We're coming down, we're, we're running up in the woods. We're coming down from the woods on a on that the decline and he's well ahead of me. So he's stopping to do our burpees. And as he turns around and looks, I give him a show. Like I splayed out and just <laughs> fell again. 
on my hands and my knees. I'm just like, just tumbling down this hill. All because I'm so, I can't run, I'm that <laughs> tired. Like I get so tired that like my feet wouldn't lift off of the dirt. <laughs> and he's like, are you, uh, you, you don't know what to say in that instance to the guy. To the guy. It's like you're training with this guy and he's like, uh, you okay man? And I'm like, yeah, I, I did this last week too. <laughs> I, I did this with Blondine. So then the next week I show up, I got a knee brace on both knees. You need like a full body knee suit. Pat. I need, you need like a Kevlar three piece suit. I need to be. Tr I need to look like somebody that you do motion capture. Well, what you need is you need like a four wheeler just to ride and follow everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be an efficient. <laughs> I got a helmet and uh, I got a combustible engine that propels me. <laughs> so I became. I just I developed this reputation amongst the group of being the guy who the like is gonna bleed the, every time. The falling bleeder. <laughs> Needless to say, I come race day, I was pretty nervous. <laughs> right. Like, um that didn't affect my sleep because you know I'm whenever my head hits the pillow, I'm just I did I get stupid. I'm a stupid sleeper. So I'm blessed with that. But when I woke up I was like, man, I'm kinda nervous. We had to drive out to Chino or Chico or what Chino. Yeah, you gotta know which one you're going to. A lot of people out there. And I'm like, oh, I get to see these obstacles and everything. And um, but there's probably a lot of falling bleeders out there too. I had on both of my my knee braces. They gave us socks so we could all look the same. And like, so I got these like tube socks on my shins, and uh, I got a headband. I always wear a headband, by the way. I've, That's I've my heard, signature. I've heard about this. Every time I work out, I gotta. There's always one at every gym. I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> the guy with the headband. <laughs> um, so I usually don't talk to him, but I I, I would talk to you. Blondine and I take off. The race starts, and um, I'm like, okay, I can I can I can do this. I caught a glimpse of some of the obstacles. There's like a a three foot wall. You got to hoist yourself over that. Then there's like a five foot wall that like I'm hoisting myself. Well, I put my put my foot out. Blondine like jumps off of my thigh. And I boost her over, right? Because there's, there's a, a teamwork, teamwork yeah. mentality, and the rest of our team they they decided to go at a slower pace. And then you know you oh, help. Whoa, whoa, hold on! You went Blondine pace. I went Blondine the pace. day of the race. I'd been you know I'd been training. Some hold more. on, but was this discussed ahead of time? Yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, don't don't leave me, please. Just you and her. Yeah. And um, there's a, so I mean, there's no obstacles where you need. I I've I've. No, there's I've read a little bit about them and I've seen like pictures where you gotta have like three people minimum to get over these certain things or something. Only if if this is like your first race and you need help over things, does your team like rally around you to help you get over things. Um, but for us, we just had each other and a lot of people were just kind of paired up. Um, and then there's like you're climbing a net wall and when I get up to the top, I'm like, man, this is, it hits me that like, if I were to fall from this, I could die. Like, I gotta really be careful and I got more scared. And then we're going over all types of stuff and then we, there's a there's a mud hill. I'd say it's probably a six feet tall, like muddy hill and you, you climb this thing and you get on you get on the top and you slide down into muddy water. Mm -hmm. That's like three feet deep. And you're run, you're like trudging across that another muddy hill. It's taller. Was it cold? Um, it, conditions were perfect. I would say it was like 74 degrees oh, in the yeah. air. Because that that would be that yeah. the cold would be the worst part. So I I get up on the second hill and like we're sliding down. I'm like, man, this is fun. All of a sudden, I'm having fun. I'm not as scared anymore. And so I slide down into that. Uh, mud pit. Are you, it's like, are you like saying "woo"? I'm you, like, did you have anything that you say when you get over? A, I didn't have like fun exclamations like "yeehaw" or anything like that. I I kept my redneck inner dialogue inside. But did, what kinds of things did you say? I went down there and I'm like, my face didn't get muddy, but like my shoulders did, and I'm in I'm in up to my armpits, and I turn around and this big uh, football player dude like makes a huge splash and when I turn around and look at him, he's he has gone under. He's got mud all over his face. And I look at him and I say, you look great. And- You encourage someone. I encourage someone. 
But you, it also he, seemed like kind of making fun of him a little bit. And he looked at me and he, I noticed that he was struggling. And he's like wiping his eyes with his muddy hands and he was like, I got it in my eyes. So he thought I was taunting him. Cause he was like having a moment. Yeah, what? That, I was like, you look great. He was like, I got it all in my eyes, man. And he was upset. And I was like, oh, I was yeah, like, well, you, hey, don't. You sounded like you were kind of making fun of him, yeah. d- just so you know. I wasn't trying to. Right. But I did realize that he was in duress at that moment. I tried to make up for it and I was like, uh, my short, my uh, sleeve doesn't have any mud on it. Wipe your, wipe your eyes on my sleeve, man. Oh. And he was like, nah, nah, nah. I was like, dude. Was Blondine okay with this? Where was she? She, she was trying to go up the next hill. She's like, quit helping the competition. And so he was like, nah, man. And I'm like, no, it's, it's perfectly dry. Just wipe your eyes on my, on my sleeve, man. And I basically made him do it. And he, and he did it and then he didn't uh, say anything to me. He just went up the hill. And then, so I go up the next hill. You linked him. You totally linked him. I helped him. You unintentionally. I helped a blind man on the road. <laughs> you unintentionally insulted him. That's link step number one. He looked great. And, and then he, you forced he, him into he doing. He see. He forced him into doing something that he didn't want to do, which is link number two. <laughs> <laughs> and and then it, you told the story and didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it ain't, I mean. How, how, he, how he took it. That and, was link number three. And then I get up to the next hill and I realize, oh, I got to slide down this third one into more mud and now there is an inflatable wall that is. Well that sounds fun. That is brought down to the surface of the mud and they force you to submerge yourself completely and go under. So everything I did to help that guy uh, was immediately erased by the fact that now we all just have to go under this thing. He, and he, that's what he should have said. And he knew that because he told me once we got to the top of the hill, he was like, this is a lot e- easier than it was yesterday. I was like, you did this yesterday? He was like, yeah. I was like, oh, so you knew that you were about to go under all the go under the mud and basically me forcing you to wipe your face yeah. on my shirt was pointless. Yeah. I didn't say any of that. I just kinda Thought slinked it. along. Yeah. But I but we had to submerge ourselves completely in the mud and that was a fun moment. But then right after that we're running to the next obstacle and it is a like a 45 degree wooden triangle that was probably eight feet tall and it had ropes hanging from it and it was soaked because everybody was soaked and your feet are soaked, your whole body's soaked by this point and you have to grab the rope, stand on the the wood and walk up this wet inversion obstacle. Hmm. And that was well, how did you do it nearly if you, impossible. If you can have no grip. Well, you could grip the the rope, but then your feet had no, no grip. But you had to lean back in order to create more. Um, what's that called in statics? Like friction. Well, you got you know you got to that 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 force back towards you know if you lean back on the rope, your legs become like a moment arm, and you're like sending your your force vector back into the the wood, mm. so that you can get more traction and walk. But it was, people were like getting halfway up and then falling flat on their faces and then just sliding back down into all the people that were waiting. Now, and I was if determined. You, if you get up to an ab- obstacle like this, is there somebody there to, to make sure you go over? No. Well, there's there's people like on the side saying, hey, just go around and if you can't do an obstacle, you have to do 30 burpees. Oh. But you lose a lot of pride when you gotta do the burpees. 30 burpees is actually not easy. Not easy. Um, I was determined to make it up and I noticed that there was one rope that had three knots in it all the way up as some didn't have any knots. I'm like, I'm going for that one. I get halfway up and then the the space between the second knot and the third knot was farther than I could reach with my fingertips and I was, so I would grab the rope and just slide back down and you feel like everybody's watching, everybody's waiting for you to get over. Right, because it's one rope. Well, there's. Probably five people could go at a time, but there's probably 45 people waiting because oh, people man. start backing up. Embarrassing. I was desperate to get over this thing and I was holding on the rope, I was leaning back, I was like really struggling and I'm like, I look at a rope over here and it has a, has a knot on it and I'm like belaying over and putting my foot on the, on, the, on the knot in the other rope and trying desperately to push up and there's a guy right up there who's helping some people over but he's not helping me over. He's just like, 
and I don't know if he was waiting for me to reach out. It was because of the headband. Well, we all wore headbands. You wear, oh. They give you a headband with a number on it. Uh, it was your number then. Yeah, that's why I train with a headband. Do you have athletic glasses? Like I Kurt, was wearing, Kurt Rambis? I was wearing contacts. I wasn't wearing oh. Kurt Rambis goggles. <laughs> Miss, I, missed opportunity. I did make it over, but it was harrowing. And then I hung at the top and like grabbed Blondine and like pulled her over. It was like a survival situation. I felt like, you know, it's like an adult version of like don't step in the lava kind of a vibe. It's what's yeah. happening. Um, there's a lot more obstacles after that, but that was the most difficult spot for me. After that, there's some there's some rings and other monkey bars and like uh, carrying a lot of weight in a bucket around a circuit and all these different things. Uh, there was even a a javelin toss, like a Spartan, like a. Is that what it's called, a javelin? Like a stick that yeah, javelin. you can skewer somebody? Into what? Into a... Uh, hay bale? Into um, people who are doing burpees. Oh, we're good. Yeah, it's like, kill, oh, you can't throw the javelin? Yeah. <laughs> then you're the target. Kill the burpeeers. Like a hay bale. Um, turns out we ran the whole time from obstacle to obstacle. We mm. didn't do any walking. Some people were doing that. Right. If you were in like the, if you went first thing in the morning, you were like in the elite competition people who were like doing this for time and it's like American Ninja Warrior type vibe. But this was like the free for all, some people walking, everybody going at their own pace. So it wasn't the competitive run to get across the finish line first. Um, but once it gets to the end, there's like a rope you have to climb and that's the, that's the first thing I could not do. I I never learned the technique to climb a rope. And Blondine was trying to show me and she was having a difficult time so we ended up doing the burpees. And then I saw. How high do you have to go? Uh, it's probably 15 feet. That'd be trouble. Um, it was intimidating and it really, my hands were hurting. So I was like, I'll just do the burpees. And then I saw Christy and the kids and they saw me cross the finish line. And um, we had we we got our pictures taken. They gave me the medal, and there's people there at the end who like hand you the medal, put it around your neck, and so I I knew that my family was watching. I felt like the whole world was watching, so I decided I'm gonna run up to this guy who's handing me the medal, uh -oh. and I'm going to take a knee like a knight. Mm. So I went to take a knee. Nobody else was taking a knee. I guess the guy hadn't hadn't <laughs> hadn't encountered anyone taking a knee because as I took the knee, he tried to put the metal over my where my head used to be mm. and instead slapped me square in the face with yeah. my metal. That's kind of what you deserve. Which uh, <laughs> is a heavy metal. This is an impressively heavy metal and I know because it hit me square in the face <laughs> at the end of my race. Wow. I'm pretty sure Christy got this on video. I hope she did. I haven't watched it back, but if it is, we can we can cut to it for the video version. YouTube.com slash Ear Biscuits, subscribe now. Um, so that kind of put a damper on my ending. It's just right, like, yeah, wham, yeah. right in the face. <laughs> and then we ran, we, we got some pictures, but then we oh, gosh. we actually ran, I was exhausted. I, I was absolutely exhausted, but Blondine was like, let's run back to the, and 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 come through with the rest of our team. We can support them. Yep, We're all man. in this together. I'm like, that's a great idea, but I uh, hate you for thinking that. Is what I was thinking. I don't want to run back. And then we started running back, and like, both of my calves, I uh -oh. cramped up. I couldn't move. I'm like, I gotta. She's like running back. I'm like, well, I gotta walk in, do this. <laughs> but we did catch up with them, and we brought them um, back. They, they ended up carrying you. <laughs> I, over, I, re over the I recovered, line. but we got to the rope climb at the end, and like Blondine wants to try it again. She's like, I like got Blondine's this inner, inner competition, and of course my family's still there watching. And then everybody's like, "Try it again, do the rope climb." Oh, oh and I'm gosh. like, "I don't want to do this again. I didn't do it the first time." And so I had watched, and I just, the, you know, the technique is you're supposed to climb a rope with your legs, not, not your, your arms. arms yeah. And I started doing it like I, I hooked my my feet together and I and then I pushed up and then I like reached my hands up and I grabbed again. No, actually, yeah, I pushed up with my legs and then I, I did it a second time and then all of a sudden I realized 
people were cheering. <laughs> and I did it a third time. And then I did it a fourth time and I looked up and there's the bell. And I'm ringing the freaking bell. I climbed the freaking rope, man. Right? That's awesome. <laughs> I, I'm forcing Rhett to say that's awesome. But um, uh, it was unexpectedly awesome to actually hit that bell. Like when I got down, like my, my family was cheering for me and then we crossed the finish line and we all took the pictures. But, um, and then it was over. And then we went to, there's this- Ruby Tuesdays. Well, we were we were so dirty, like coated head to foot, and um, th they had rigged up all these garden hoses. I'm talking like probably 35 garden hoses under this cement slab, and so I go under there and like we're we're all like hosing off, so that then we can go into this changing place and change. And I look down, and somebody had left two hotel size shampoo bottles hmm. in front of me. And there's like probably 50 people at different stages of hosing themselves off. Men, women, children. It was like post-apocalyptic, except for me, because I was lathered from head to toe in every freaking bit of that shampoo that nobody else had. So every I realized everybody was looking at me and laughing because I was like, I was sudged up like a dude oh, taking what? a bubble bath. They didn't want to use it? I offered it to the people that I knew and like, Chad took a little bit and like shampooed his hair a little bit. I'm like, man, I, I've i never been, I haven't, I can't ever remember being this dirty. <laughs> it was like the ram in the thicket. God gave me <laughs> shampoo and I tried to share it, but no one, no one wanted to like go full lather. Um, except they, me. They were like, I'll, 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 I'll do a thorough shower when I get home. Right, I was like putting it down my pants and, uh, and then I changed and we wow. went back to my family and ate some beef jerky and some uh, bananas and headed out of there. But the thing that happened that, that I didn't anticipate was, and it, it started at the rope climb and then it continued way into the evening. And it was this, I felt good. <laughs> <laughs> I, was so, I was proud of what I had done. And it, I know that sounds kinda cheesy and a little weird to say, but the thing that I realized was um, I in no way anticipated actually feeling that, honestly. I thought, I'm gonna sign up for this thing. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult. I'm actually, I'm not surprised that I'm nervous about doing it. I'm gonna push myself physically and I'm gonna have a physical experience of completing something. As long as I don't get hurt, this is a success. But I honestly, it, it didn't cross my mind that it would, that there would be an emotional component to completing a race like this. You know, people talk about completing marathons and I totally get, if you run 26 miles and you cross the finish line, like I totally get that you might be in tears of joy. Of course. Like, but I did not anticipate with like doing a little three mile, 5K, you know, jumping over some ropes and oh, this is no big deal, that it would actually have an impact on my self esteem. It, it's, it was surprising to me. Um and it was it was kind of awesome. And I th and well, does I Does this mean you're like a t uh, you're like a Spartan guy I'm now? I'm a Spartan junkie now. No, I, I people t I've talked to people after when they're like, "Did you get the bug?" and I actually know what they're talking about cuz there's this thrill of achieving oh, yeah. something. But you know, I'm not I'm not competitive at all. So any like any of my many soccer exploits. There was I don't, I don't know that I, or any, any type of sport, physical competition type thing, I don't think I've ever experienced actual joy in doing it. Hmm. Because I was like, what am I feeling right now? This is so <laughs> weird. I, what, what is the feeling that I have that my family just watched me climb a rope? I mean, it's kinda silly. I'm a 40 year old guy ringing a cowbell at the top of a rope. And the answer was, Pride, you know, I was proud. <laughs> I was, I was proud, and it was like, 
it was so weird to then realize that it was the first time that had happened. So now I gotta get my other three. That night, it was like late that night, because um, I went back into the kitchen to like get a, like a pseudo midnight snack, because I had earned it, I mean, let's yeah, be real. Right. My watch told me I burned 1,100 calories. It took me an hour wow. and a half to finish the race, that's how long it took. I was absolutely exhausted. And is it the same? Because you were telling me that there's that your portion wasn't competitive, so people weren't like going for time. Nobody was shoving. But the people before that, yeah, in the morning are. And is it the same obstacles? I yes, same. So like, what's give me give me like the I think the, the record best time. I think thirty minutes. I think something around there. Yeah, pretty. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, for me to be running the whole time, jogging, if I'm not doing an obstacle and only waiting at a couple of them. It was an hour and a half, and I, I I felt really good about that. Yeah, if I haven't established that already. <laughs> so that night, like Lily, lo and behold, Lily comes in the kitchen. She, I guess, she earned a midnight snack too. And I'm like, Hey, Lily, what what did you think about my race today? And she's like, Well, you know, when you before the after the rope climb, which, which the first time I didn't do it. She was like, you go up to the rings and you know how you gotta stand there for a second. And it's like, I could, I kind of looked at your face and I could tell that you were afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I look at Lily. I see the fear in your yeah, eyes. I was like, and I, I told Lily, I was like, I was. And she was like, and then you started doing it and you like grabbed one ring and then you swung to the next ring and I could tell you kind of got the hang of it and then you felt better about it. And I was like, I did. <laughs> and then, uh. And then after you, you did, and I was like, did you see me do the rope? And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you went back and did the rope, that was that was cool. And then there was like a pause and she was like, I can tell you're pretty proud of yourself. <laughs> and I'm like. You, you think? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I am, I am. And it was, it. you know, I think uh, it, it's, the, it's the stuff that I've already said, but it's also this thing of like being, do, don't you feel like we were taught a little bit that like you, being proud of yourself or doing something is not, it's not a pure, it's not a pure thing to feel. There, not, not in the McLaughlin household. <laughs> you think? Oh, well, I don't, maybe it's in more, I, okay, then maybe it's just me then, that I feel like if you're gonna be proud of something you did, it's like, yeah, I'm proud of that. There's like a tinge well, of, no, but I mean, you like, don't wanna flaunt well, it. You don't wanna be honest getting, and be like, yeah, tell Being me. proud of yourself and pri pri being prideful. I, I understand there's two different things, but I, I guess it bled in my psyche. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So I, you know, I'm going. I I think I will do it again. I, I encourage you to give it a shot. Well, I was, I was reading that book, um, there's a book about uh, the Iceman, Wim Hof, mm -hmm. and the guy who who wrote the book is talking about. This is like I read this like a year and a half ago, and it was talking about Spartan races. I was like, I need to, I should really do something like that, but I don't. Want, they don't do that in my gym, so I didn't. I didn't look at it because you need you oh. got you got it. You yeah, I wasn't gonna go out there by myself and do yeah, it. Yeah, you gotta have a squad. Um, I don't think you can be in my squad because. Oh, I'm gonna get another squad and beat your squad. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I'm gonna take the. You You're and, gonna try you to recruit Blondine, Blondine to your side. <laughs> um, no, I, I, yeah, I definitely want to do it. I, I am legitimately now. You know me. I am incredibly competitive, like competitive um, sports were like a huge part of my life growing up, and so I, I think I, I definitely approach it very differently because I never. Like I, I didn't, I didn't think about sports and competition in the way that I just saw something and it was like I am going to win at that, and that, and, that, and I was just like I put everything into I'm into how am I going to win? So it was a different kind of approach. But so does that mean can you quantify? Can you pinpoint what's your greatest physical feat? Because I guess I'm saying, I mean, definitely in recent history, this Spartan race was that for me. Like a, like a personal physical milestone. Last time I ran 5K was when I was on the soccer team. Like we had to run a lot in high school. I'm talking that many years ago, 20, well, okay. 20 some plus years ago was the last time I ran anywhere near that. So well, okay, so speaking of 5K, so uh, I probably have told this story in like way, maybe way back on like the Rent Lancaster or something, but um, 
my basketball coach was the cr- cross country coach, Coach Gage, mm-hmm. and uh, he's still the basketball coach at Harness Central. I don't know if he's still doing cross country, but anyway, so he kind of got all the guys on the basketball team to run cross country, and so I and I was I, I was an athlete, so I just I was like, okay, I'll I'll do this. I had never really done long distance running, but I was like, okay, I mean, pe- some pe- pe- people can do it, so I am, will be one of the people who can do it. Like, okay. That's the way I've always, if somebody can do it, okay, well, I'll be, I'll, I can do it. And the course is usually a 5K, right? It's a 5K, you know, it's the one that went around the tobacco field and like down the dirt road next to school and stuff. Yeah. And so they were like, okay, well, uh, day one, you guys are all just gonna run this 5K and we're gonna kinda see where you're at. Yeah, baseline. And because that was a competition amongst just the people and uh, someone who you're now like half related to, Brian, uh, Lewis's nephew, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah, um, okay, yeah, I know. W- w- was out there. He's another like tall guy like me, and yep. um, so we start running, and I'm like, didn't expect him to be good. Now he's tall like me, but I just he, you know he hadn't played any other sports that I knew of, and right, and I'm like, whoa. He's not gonna beat me. Oh, and it, no, no preparation, no preparation for this. I don't remember this story, by the way. So, so I just like, well, I gotta, I gotta keep up with him. I'm like, good lord, this guy is flying. He was blondining you, and uh, I'm like out, out of shape. Like ba- basketball season was over, and I guess I was in pretty good shape for basketball season, whatever. But like, I, you know, not this kind of shape. He so, was your height. Yeah, he was, and so I'm just running like crazy, and we get, and of course, the way that the the way that the course, I kept up with him the whole time, and the way that the course ends is it goes around one lap of the track. You come in and go around one. Yeah, and I was like, he's not beating me. <laughs> this is day one. Day one, I ran. Did you talk to him? No, I you ran. Were just ne- running beside I, him. I ran beside him, and then and didn't say a word in the last like. Ten steps, overtook him and beat him. You were were you sprinting at the end? I ran the five k <laughs> in eighteen minutes. It's <laughs> pretty good. Eighteen minutes, just to beat Brian, and which incidentally is not even that good of a time in cross country. Once like you start like competing, okay. But it was by far the best time I I ever ran because. I was like, I beat Brian, and that's that's really all I wanted to prove. And then the rest of the time, we during the meets, we would actually run, and then we would get around the corner, and then we would stop running and walk, break out potato chips or something. And then I would get when we we would get back into where like the parents were watching. I had kind of just kind of jogged along, not too hard, but I got to that place where everybody was what was watching. Yeah, and I started sprinting, and I would like pass like seventeen people at the very end and come in and finish like in the middle of the pack, <laughs> just so I could come in like chariots of fire, like just flying. Like, how does this tall guy have so much energy? Now you say chariots of fire, but I'm I always picture that guy in slow motion. Uh, yeah, but I, I do look very slow because of my limb length. <laughs> <laughs> but beating Brian in in, in that in first practice, day that in practice. in practice that may be one of my greatest physical you, feats. You uh, you just wanted you just want to let him know you could. Yeah, cuz I was thinking about this because I once did. I was thinking about this That's or, you, that's or, your greatest physical feat like I that's the one that you're thinking about. Well, I've I've had a lot of success in sports, but I don't think of those as like a physical right, feat. Right. Right. Yeah. It's not. You know what I'm saying? Just like a pure physical exertion. Like pushing your body to the limit. Have you ever been, have you ever worked out at the gym to the point where you just vomited on your no, own feet? I was thinking about this. And first of all, it takes a lot for me to vo- to actually vomit. You know, there was the McLaughlin streak that me and my uh, brother and my dad had for like, it was like 40 years combined, nobody had vomited. And then like okay. and within one year, we all three vomited. Oh. Um, but anyway. Um, Bet that was quite a gusher. The, uh, so I don't, I, but I've never, I, I never worked out so hard that I threw up. I worked out hard, but I. Oh, I came, when I first started going to the gym, I came close. Even when, cause I used to go to the same gym that, that Like they that gave me, they gave me a packet, like sugar water to drink. Well. Had my, had my head between my knees. Well, and it's like the, uh, like the circuit training kind of thing and that you were, we wore like the heart rate monitors and stuff and like yeah. trying to burn a certain number of calories or whatever. Um. Yeah, I mean, it basically, it's like, like a couple of weeks ago, I, I go to a gym, but I have a I have a trainer, and we go through like 
a bunch of different exercises. It's basically uh, a mix of, I mean, it's all, it's all strength training, but it's like so quick and there's a bunch of it going on together. So you're also getting a cardio workout at the same time and it lasts for like an hour. And like, I work out to the, to, like to the point, I have so, like, like I have so much pride, but the bad kind of pride, like I never, ever stop. Like and say I can't do that last five oh. seconds or something like that. Like I can't. There's just something in me. It's the whole Enneagram three thing. I cannot. Uh huh. You can't admit. Right. I will that not reach the limit. I will if they've told you to if do. If you're like you have to do this plank with this weight on your back for a minute after you've done this thing, I'm like, okay, well, that's what it is. I'll do it. So I so it went. So she just pushes me as far as it'll. I'll go. And then I was like sore for like. That was probably as as much as I pushed myself in my forties, definitely, which had, my forties haven't been very long. But never to the. But then there's things like I'll have to like run across a parking lot in the rain to get to my car, and it's just like I'm, you know, I got my back issues. There's like four different places yeah. that my back can get hurt, and I've got my knee that's got arthritis, and my elbow, and my I got tall guy issues, and so I like. <laughs> very stiff and very and very much thinking. Don't hurt yourself. Yeah. Whenever I get going, I'm like, don't hurt yourself. That's the main reason I'd be scared of the uh, Spartan race because, like, I was doing like assisted yeah. assisted pull ups at the gym, and like my upper back thing like snaps. Like it's just so like the rope climb would be a problem. I think I could uh, get to a place where I was physically capable of it if I figured out how to do it. Mm -hmm. But I think I I could potentially hurt myself. But I mean, that, like you talk about running in the parking lot, I still have trouble, especially now, running in the parking lot because of this metal, you know? <laughs> Wearing this everywhere do makes I, it a lot more difficult we, to exert myself. Do we need to like install obstacles like in the office? Like in order for you to like get to the bathroom, you gotta, I'll get Blondine to come in here and. Yeah, we're gonna can, jump over stuff. Yeah. Sh sure, yeah. I am, I am very much uh, the, attracted to the idea of doing those kinds of physical challenges. Not Blondine, I haven't seen Blondine. Um, the, because I, well, I, we, we started working out basically as adults at the same time. Like I, I used to, you know, I would play basketball or do something and then you kind of just run out of time for doing that and then it's just yeah. like, then there was like the years of inactivity where we were just working really hard. And yeah. I mean, I did convince us to get that elliptical machine that we had in the Lillington yes. basement and we used it every once in a while. But I never used that then, once. Then we just ended up putting clothes on it. We would drink, we would drink Slim Fast. But we drink but Slim not Fast. not to lose weight. Just because it was efficient. Just we, an efficient mode of continuing to work but not, not have any sustenance. In those days so we, we would. Drink, we, would, we would down to Slim Fast and just keep editing videos and sometimes you, one day you showed up with an elliptical machine. I was like, dude. Don't. And I that's did, just a guilt. And just, I did use it. It's just a physical manifestation of my guilt. I did use it. Uh, no, you didn't. Yeah, I did more than you did. Well, yeah, I never used it. Yeah, exactly. You could use it once, and that statement would be true. I used it at least twelve times. But we would have a slim fast for lunch, and then sometimes we have a slim fast for dinner as well. And then we would keep editing, and then we. I would think that is the commercial, by the way. And then we would sleep at the office. <laughs> And then we would wake up and do it again when, yeah. when like a project was, was due because we didn't have any help. And it, it, this is fresh in my mind because, you know, I, I'll turn this into a mythical society plug just because it's near and dear to my heart. The, uh, I was watching, we're, we're releasing on the mythical society, uh, we're trickling out the archive of the original Rhett and Link cast show, which was a live show every Thursday night on Ustream. Now it's just something you can watch if you're a Mythical Society member. Um, and so we released the first few of those and um, there's one that features that elliptical because I remember you got it and we did a whole we did a whole show about exercise or something and I'm pretty sure that you were on the elliptical. That one, that one hasn't been released to the society yet but just looking at like that basement and seeing how we were setting up everything, it, remind, it just reminded me of that. Basically, just a shameless mythical society plug, but no. But I, I definitely have a. Um, it, there, as you start getting older, and you're like, I got, I got to do something to counteract what is happening to my body. I mean, the main thing that's happening to my body is just annoying injuries 
or and you don't even know what happened. You're like, I, I don't remember doing anything to my shoulder. I think it's just it's expired. Well, my I I was playing soccer over Thanksgiving and you know at my with my nephew Nehemiah and the kids and like I kicked the soccer ball and like I messed up my hip oh, yeah. flexor. You can't do anything like and that. And it I just I walloped that soccer ball and I I knew something had happened. And it's still not better. You got to stretch. You got to I've been stretching. You got to stretch 1 minute for every year that you're old. So you got to do a, I got to do a 41 minute stretch every morning before no before any physical activity. Yeah. But I do like a 20 minute stretch maybe every like that's what that stretch as as my wife calls it now the stretch and snuggle time with Barbara. And here's but here's my next thing because I I the Spartan thing I do recommend it. I think it's I don't know. It, it there is a lot of risk for injury. So you got to be we, we we need to be careful. There's less risk in triathlons though. Well, somebody, you know, that's just endurance. Is that where you swim? Swim, like bike, Iron and Man? run. See, but you can do a, a you can do short versions of the those. The swimming is the problem for me. I woke up in the middle of the night uh thirsty as I'll get out last night. And you know I keep a big thing of water beside my bed. And if because you swim, you don't get thirsty cuz you just kneel. absorb all the water. And I gotta stay hydrated. What? No, I start drinking the water, and I'm so thirsty that I'm like, I didn't take a breath in before I started drinking the water. I had like exhaled, and then I started drinking the water. And I was so thirsty that I like, I was having this inner dialogue of like, I need to breathe now, but I'm gonna get one more slurp in of this water. And I did that, and then I nearly had a panic attack that I was gonna. Dr- like drown myself. I just have this like, I have this fear of of, of drowning, of uh, drowning in your own thermos. <laughs> yeah, I was I was afraid. I was I can't I don't like holding my breath, man. And that's why I cannot. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna drown in a water bottle at three a.m., how am I supposed to get in the ocean and swim for a prolonged period? I cannot do that. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. Triathlon? I'm gonna be an Iron Man. If you wanna do triathlons, I'm totally down because I, I think it's much less likely that I get injured because I'm not pulling on things and crawling. It's just running, biking, swimming. And I don't know what the order is. I think it's biking, swimming, running. Biking, swimming, running. Oh, I, I just, I'm not ready to do swim training. But Sw- hey, swimming? That's something you do when you're like is 80. <laughs> no. You can do that. Swimming is. Tough, like okay. So you know, we used to live next to. I'm talking about like water aerobics. The pool. Um, I've in, never in, done that in Sherman Oaks, and I was like, I'm gonna get up in the morning and just do swim some laps. And like, I was a ve- I was a good swimmer, I was a competitive swimmer growing up. Uh huh. Um, and was was good. Should have stuck with it, but uh, so that now you would be so, what? So a swimmer. So that I would be Michael Phelps. <laughs> Because I, I was I was actually good at it. I think I was actually naturally better at it than other things that I did. Okay, but uh, I didn't like the speedo, and uh, but I love speedos now. That's the weird thing. I'm wearing one right now. Uh, but I was like, not a sponsor. I'm gonna go a brand. and uh, just swim some laps. And like I started out in freestyle, thinking that okay, this is the easiest. You know, this is pretty easy. Like a couple, a couple of back and forth, and you're like, "Whoa, this is not easy, man!" Talk about getting your breath right. Get, you end up having to take a breath like every time because I was just, I was just a sprint swimmer. So like I would, uh-huh. I would, uh, I would go under, I would dive in, and I wouldn't come up at all. You know what I'm saying? I would, I would go, get to the, do a turn, maybe take one breath in a down and back in like a 50 meter or whatever, right? But like. You do a freestyle, but your face would stay under. Yeah, but th- this was like I got to come up every freaking time. I'm so out of shape. I don't know how I'm in a little bit better shape now. But then switch? I just started going to the breaststroke, and I was okay, like, "Okay, breaststroke. Got to do breaststroke. I got to keep my head above water the whole time, or I'm gonna die." Then after that, you're doing like backstroke. Then after that, I got out of the pool and went home and never did it again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's tough. It's really tough. But, but if it was muddy every, water, it would probably be fun. But with everything like that, you. Like when you're running, like you get to a place where it clicks and you're like, okay, I'm normalized. Mm -hmm. Because with every physical activity, you hit that wall. If you get through that wall, 
then if you get your breathing and everything and rhythm and you're, if you're not worrying so much about competing against somebody else but competing against yourself, you can kind of maintain it for a lot longer than you realize. I'd, lo- I'd love to do that, man. Let's be triathlon buddies. Uh, I, we'll call I, ourselves the triathlon guys. I, Shorten it to try guys. Nope, taken. Well, I already have a, a, a workout partner. Blondine, well can we be a trio? No, but uh, the, the triple can, the triple try people. You can probably look up Brian. Uh-huh. He's probably still your height. Yeah, I think he's a, he's an he works in an auction. He's a he works for uh, he's an auctioneer. Christie's, isn't that the fancy auction place? He's like in New York City right now. Yeah, yeah. New York City, New York City. <laughs> Brian's in New York City <laughs> working for Christie. Working for Christie's, Christie's auction house, candelabras and such. Mm. Okay. That might be difficult being on opposite sides. So the there country. it is, my greatest physical feat and I have this to show for it, the thing that slammed me in the face. <laughs> I'm a Spartan, I'm a Spartan. I'm envious Kiko, man. Kiko, I'm gonna give you all types of pictures. They were taking pictures during the race and so I, I tried to make a point to, to to make faces, maybe I could be a uh, I could be a Spartan photographer. Photographer, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what that could be my position. I, I got quite an angle. I can get quite an angle on things with my height. Thanks for sharing in this physical milestone experience of mine. Um, I'll show you how to climb a rope if you if you ever want to learn. <laughs> I did it once, and there you have it. Hashtag Air Biscuits. If you got any questions about like uh, you know pushing yourself to the physical limit. I'm, I'm here, I'm here for you, just yeah, ask away. In the meantime. Oh, just, we, need a, we need a recommendation. Oh yeah, I'm gonna give Don't a recommendation. Uh, it's a little bit thematic in, 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 in uh, with what we've been talking about. Rex and effects. Uh, I'm Check, gonna, baby. I'm gonna recommend a book that, okay. I, that I finished in uh, two days, so it's an easy read. Is it ours? Um, no, I think I, I do recommend our book. I definitely recommend The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek. Um, but this was actually. Is it out yet? You have to. Is it out yet? Yeah. Bleakcreek.com is the, is the website where you can pick that up. You can pre order that. Um, nice plug, right? You just recommended our own book. That wasn't my intention. My intention was to recommend a book that is kind of an old, it's a little bit of an older book, like 20 years or whatever. But, Animal Farm? Uh, I, I read the road, by, the road by Cormac McCarthy. So I didn't. Vigo was in the movie version. Yeah, of that, I right? didn't. Re, yeah, he was. Uh, I didn't realize how much n- n- Cormac McCarthy, you know, one of the great American authors, has written uh, a bunch of different stuff. All the pretty horses, No Country for Old Men, like things that have been made into epic movies. Um, but the road is like, uh, I mean, you 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 can. It's short. You can read it. In, you can read it in a sitting if you've got enough time. Huh. Um, but it is so just. Speaking of bleak, <laughs> it is a just bleak book. You know, near future, post apocalyptic, just gray, dull landscape. No people, and the people that are around are just garbage. Making it sound. Great. It's exactly the kind of thing that turns me on. <laughs> okay. So if you like, if you like a book about, if you're aroused by the <laughs> apocalypse, if you're aroused by a world where there's no hope, like I am, if that just scratches the right itch for you, and you <laughs> listen, I know you're out there. I know a lot of you are out there. That's why these books are so popular. Um, then I highly recommend that. I re- and I'm g- I'm getting into now. I'm reading all the pretty horses. Um, I'm gonna go. Th- I'm gonna go through the whole collection. Oh, uh, because well, hold on. You made your recommendation. Let's but, don't, don't expand. Because listen, it. It, it takes he the does punch out of the recommendation to just like s- slather here's it out. There's an to in- other interesting books. fact about Cormac McCarthy, and I didn't re- realize that this was. I thought that maybe it was just a stylistic choice for the for the for this particular uh, book, but he does not use punctuation. Nearly to the degree to the degree of other people. So, in other words, there's no punctuation. There's no quotation marks in the entire book. Are there periods? There are periods, but there are commas. Very few commas. So, 
one of the things that he did is back in the day, he's old, he's got like, he's like in almost in his 90s at this point, but uh, this, his story goes that he was tasked with sort of cleaning up some writer's work back when he was a young man. And one of the things he did is he like went through and he took out a bunch of what he called unnecessary punctuation, including a bunch of commas. And the guy was like, I really like this, like how efficient this is. And like now his writing style uh, is, he'll just be like, why don't we go do a Spartan race, period. Link said, period. Oh, because Link said is just is a sentence. Yeah. It can be. But usually. We, that is odd. It is, at first, a little bit like, oh, is this, am I reading someone's thoughts? Like, and then you're just like, no, you know what? Punctuation is unnecessary. And then there's this whole long uh, exchanges, which is like in the road, it's a father and son talking to each other and he doesn't say the son said or, and first of all, it's just the boy and the man. It's not like they don't, he doesn't give them names. You, he quits, he just completely forgets saying this You don't know who's said, saying what? No, you do know. You, like, you do know who's saying what because of the way that it's written. Hmm. Lot, you know, when it's a two person exchange, it's usually just back and forth. But, but if you get it off, then you're backwards. But it doesn't happen. I don't know, it was kind of a trip. I, I love discovering something that's like a, an American treasure that a lot of people already know about uh, and then being like, oh, there's like a, it's like when you just it's like when you find a new television show and you're like there's seven seasons of this oh so I'm like oh good wreck you know I'm so so I, I good wreck I, I'm excited about that all right thanks for hanging out with us this week you know what next week we'll be here to speak at you again so uh, whether you're listening only or watching on our YouTube channel um, you're you're special either way there's more where that came from hashtag ear biscuits. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.